to buy or not to buy? That is the question. The A7S3. Don't buy get it. it. You don't buy need it. it. It's a waste buy of money. It. Just get it. You Stop need right it. right now. Don't buy it. it. Don't buy it. Buy don't it. get buy it. it. Get it's it. a waste of money. In this video, I want to talk about the A7S3 and if you need it. I know you want it, but do you need it? There's a few questions you have to ask yourself. Are you just a YouTuber? Are you a grandmother, grandfather, dad, or mom who wants to take photography and some video of their children? Are you a landscape photographer? Are you a videographer? Do you shoot products? What are you gonna do with this camera? The A7S III is the long awaited unicorn of cameras to come out. <laughs> We've been waiting for five years for that camera, but why have we been waiting for it? I wanna to talk to you for a second about uh, a small comparison between the A7R4 and the A7S III. I did a little research on B&H's website where I pulled up both specs to both cameras and I went through the list and I started asking myself, do I really need the A7S III? I just do these videos on YouTube mostly and I'm mostly a photographer. I do product shoots. We print large format um, for our customers. My daughter owns a sign shop. We have a large format printer. I do a lot of um, product photography for our local bars and restaurants. They need big banners uh, when they're announcing a special or Cinco de Mayo or whatever event they're holding. They wanna show pictures of their food and their drinks with prices and they wanna hang them outside or do window graphics uh, or wall graphics in their restaurant or bar. So I need a higher resolution camera and I have three daughters, so someday I'm gonna be a grandpa um, and I'm gonna to wanna to do video. So I started asking myself, do I really need the A7S III? What am I gonna use it for, just for YouTube? I'm gonna spend 35 with tax, $3,700 for an A7 III. So I just wanna go over some of these specs for you and these are the questions you need to ask yourself. If you're strictly video and that's all you do, and I'm not talking about YouTube, I'm talking about professionally spending 35 to $3,700 lusting after this camera, are you a videographer by trade? Are you using this to make commercials or, or videos for clients and make some money on it? Because if not, I think the A7R4 or even the A7R3 or the 6600 or 6400 will suit you just fine. So let's jump into these specs. So I printed out these uh, notes for reference for me to be able to follow along with you and read through some of these specs uh, so we can compare. You'll see that the, uh, the A7S III is on the left side and the A7R4 is on the right. Uh, starting with the uh, viewfinder and monitor, uh, between the two cameras, um, the A7S III has nine million uh, dots of uh, viewfinder resolution and the A7R4 only has five million. So there's a nice increase there. Uh, the viewfinder size is also uh, 0.64 uh, where on the A7S III whereas on the a7r4 is 0.5 so it's a little bit bigger um, uh, running down the list here you can see that the monitor on the back uh, they both have one point or one million four hundred forty four four thousand uh, dots of resolution and then the obvious is the a7s3 has an articulating screen uh, versus the a7r4 and previous generations have just a tilty screen now i want to talk to you about that for a second because if you're a vlogger and you need to see yourself everybody's saying that's you know we've been wanting the tilty flippy screen forever and um yeah that's great but as a photographer there's been instances where i wish i had a flippy screen too so i could go way up high or way down low without hurting my back and my knees so uh, definitely some advantages there to the A7S III, but do you need them? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. M uh, moving along to the focus area of the two cameras, again, the A7S III is on the left and the A7R4 is on the right. 
Uh, as far as the uh, auto focusing uh, phase detection, you have 759 phase detection points on the A7S3 versus 564 on the A7R4. Now this covers the whole sensor or partially par part of the sensor, and um, and it's yeah it's going to be the more the the more we get into these generations over the next few years of cameras we're going to see more phase detection points um, but 567 on the a7r4 is plenty i'm mostly shooting centered focus uh, as a product photographer um, i really don't use that the joystick to move my focusing uh, areas around and and um, uh, yeah again it's nice to have more focusing points, but the autofocus sensitivity being negative uh, six EVs compared to the negative three, that's really nice. So in lower light, you can uh, focus better. But um, I'll put an example up here. When I was on vacation for my birthday last weekend, uh, I took some uh, video with my A7R4 in super low light, an actual dark where only the uh, fire pit was illuminating me. And I didn't have any problem tracking me, um, you know, or, or uh, auto detecting my face and eye. So um, that's why I'm trying to do this comparison to see if you really need to spend more money on an A7S3. Uh, but uh, all right, let's move forward. Exposure control. Um, yeah, the uh, <laughs> uh, uh, ISO sensitivity uh, is greatly improved. Um, but I don't, again, I'm not out at night shooting in low light. That's one of the questions you need to ask yourself. Are you, you know, if you're uh, shooting your kid's football game, it's lit, whether it's in a stadium or outdoors. If you're shooting a concert, your daughter's violin concert, um, again, it's all lit. The stage is all lit. It's nice to have otter, uh, a higher auto or higher sensitivity for your ISO, but... Um, you start getting grain and noise, and in the A7S 3 obviously, because of the pixel size, you're not getting as much grain and noise in lower light, but I'm telling you that my A7R 4 is quite capable of shooting in low light without noise. Uh, moving down, everything seems to be about the same. Shutter speeds, um, metering methods. Uh, so, so far, you know, other than the low light capabilities, um, the, the cameras are really close in specs. Now, I do want to tell you that the sensors are mo almost an equivalent uh, of each sensor because the, um, let me get to my other notes here. Both sensors are Exmor uh, BSI, uh, backlit uh, CMOS sensors. Now they're calling the uh, A7S3 sensor is an Exmor RS versus the A7R4 is just an R. So they must have updated uh, uh, the sensor from the A7R4, which the A7R4 came out about 10 months ago. So I would hope they would keep uh, improving their sensors as time goes on. All right, let's move on to the continuous shooting. Now this is uh, kind of important, uh, but also confusing because on a 12 megapixel sensor, uh, it can only shoot, the A7S III can only shoot 10 frames a second. Well, on a 61 megapixel sensor, the A7R4, it can also shoot 10 frames a second. The only difference is, is the buffering speed. Well, obviously 61 megapixels versus 12 megapixels yeah it's not gonna buffer <laughs> that's because the pictures are garbage for uh, social media yeah they're great but why do you need an a7s3 for social media when you can spend seven or eight or a thousand dollars on an a6600 or a6400 and get 24 megapixels for one-third the price or one-fourth the price so uh, obviously the A7S3 wins there too, but again, I, contest, I contend that it's a 12 megapixel camera. And as I said before, um, I shoot for 
to blow up pictures and to, to actually print my photography. Now, if you think that you're never gonna print anything bigger than an eight and a half by 11 or a 13 by 19, then you'll be fine with this camera. Um, but in the future, if you ever wanna blow something up to a three by, you know, a two by three foot, uh, good luck. You're gonna see lots of pixels. It's gonna look pretty pixelated. Uh, moving on down the list, the uh, A7S III has dual card slots, just like the A7R4. However, now they're using the CF Express Type A or uh, UHS-2. And now that's cool because the A7S III does do um, 120 frames a second in 4K. So you're going to need that fast buffer speed, that card readout to be able to shoot at 120 uh, frames a second in 4K. And, the, and these are gonna be giant files. That's the other thing you gotta ask yourself. Do, do you have the money now to buy a computer to be able to work with these size files? Um, so uh, again, there you go with, I'm trying to help you decide, you know, the A7S III, is it really something you need? I know you want it, but do you need it? And the connectivity there, the HDMI port is full size, which is uh, nice if you're gonna be attaching something like an Atomos Ninja um, to get that 600 bit readout in 4K. Uh, that's uh, gonna uh, help you uh, speed along things, but who the hell is, are you making movies? I, I don't, I'm not making movies. I'm making YouTube videos. Uh, and um, <laughs> so, and what are you doing with this camera? <laughs> you gotta ask yourself that. So, um, and then in the video, this is where obviously the A7S III really just takes off because it is a uh, video camera. It, it's still a hybrid, it still takes pictures. Uh, only 12 megapixels, but it's still considered a hybrid video or photography camera. And I'm not gonna read through the list here. You can see that the A7R4 uh, only does 8-bit. It still does 422, which is nice. A nice codec. Uh, and, um, but you can see all these different um, shooting capabilities of the A7S III here. I'm not gonna read all the way through the list. Um, and the last page here uh, for audio, um, the new audio file format that the A7S III has. Yeah, that's cool, but I'm, I'm, when I'm doing video, I'm recording externally anyways. I got a boom mic and I'm hooked to a, uh, an external recorder and I just synchronize my audio in post and it's super easy to do. Again, you gotta ask yourself, are you making movies? Are you, uh, I know you're a creator and I'm a creator too. And it's, it's awesome to have all this technology at the tip of your fingers. But unless, in my opinion, unless that's all you're doing is shooting video and nothing else, and you don't need a quality camera, um, then I would suggest you stick with an A7R 3 an A7R 4 uh, an A6600, an, uh, an A6400. Um, super light, super lightweight for video on a gimbal, totally stabilized. Now, I'm not saying you can't put the A7S III on a gimbal, you can. But again, you're gonna need a faster computer, a bigger gimbal to carry the weight. Um, it's just a lot of money, and it's something you need to think about in your head that I wanted to kind of discuss with you. And I'd love for you to leave some comments on your thoughts below and have, head over to B&H's uh, website and pull up the two com uh, cameras and compare for yourself. I did pre-order an A7S III. I, uh, hopefully we'll receive it this year sometime. I got it from B&H's website and I'm excited to get it. Do I need it? No, I don't need it. Do I want it? Yeah, I want it. All the hype, Gerald Undone, Manny Ortiz, Tony Northrup, and the list goes on and on and on. And these are all people that uh, maybe not paid by Sony, but had hands on with it for two months or a month prior to the release. So I trust them to, uh, I trust them to let me know 
that that I need it. I guess that sounds stupid, um, but uh, that's how we all feel, right? We're all hyped up about it because we watch our uh, favorite YouTubers um, promoting this stuff, and then we got to run out and get it. It's called gas gear acquested syndrome, uh, G A S. Yeah, and I have it, and you have it. So. <laughs> Uh, if you like this video, please leave some comments down below. Ask yourself these questions. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And subscribe to my channel if you uh, are digging my channel. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.